All right, we'll stitch that back together later. I don't really know what I did differently. Um, the geometry is just cut or just pocket that item. The stock contours means, you know, don't go outside that boundary. That's what I was like, I want a smaller area. And sometimes when it's not acting right, what I'll do is I'll go back into the modeling, draw a curve around the things I want milled out, or I might do an offset to give myself a little extra room. Options you could take advantage of. The second thing that we added, which was pretty important, is your multiple depths. I don't know what that is. I would like, so Ben, why not use a computer? I don't know. Really just a millimeter. So let's see, it's 0.125, which is an eighth inch. So I'll call it four millimeters, being a little aggressive, but so my multiple depths, four millimeters. Is it gonna take longer? Yes. Is it less likely to break my bit? Yes. First round, second round. We'll see what that looks like. The thing is, the goal is to get to parallel finishing with that round bit, making it nice and smooth, but it can't remove all that material. So this one is typically a, a very angry looking bit. It's there just to rawr, get rid of things. Let's, let's take us a look. Stock please, play button. I'll speed up a bit. All right, so that's your first round. There's second round. third round and they have a lot of transfer going over mm -hmm. back and forth all right so that's the entire thing so two six tells us all right this is a, it's a 41 minute job and let me go back to display what I'd like to see is take the tool and the tool path off The only thing it hasn't done is all this on the side. So I think my suggestion was go back into our model. I'll see if I can do an offset. Let's see. Project and then offset. What do you say about source project that? Here we go. like the whole profile. Hmm. I'm going to do something jank real fast just so the idea. Ah. What? I got you. You just want some space around it. Yeah. Might argue me for a second. There are, ah, there's another way I could have done it instead of doing this. All right, back to the cam. Another way I could have done this is it wants to recalculate because I changed something and that wasn't on the, the bottom. My bad. Another approach I could have done. It's gonna to want to recalculate. Not simulate, but generate. There we go. So I'm gonna do another, and this one is going to be not facing, but contour. All right, tool, same tool. And you can run like these guys back to back to back. Disabled, good. Contour selection. The only thing I'm interested in that I don't really know is I want it to run the outside. 
At some point, I like to dictate that. This one, I do want to get the drop figured out. We can call them roughing passes. There should be no step over because it's going to run around and run around and run around. What I'm interested in is how much is it dropping? Maximum drop roughness, we already said four is probably good. There we go. Take a look. Give me that stock. Give me that play button. So you've got it clearing out the outside. Yep. And I guess it's doing that first. I got it doing second. Does it matter? No. Not really. It'll be louder because okay. without having the entire piece to go through, it's going to make that little vibration. Okay. But it's the same thing accomplished. All right. That didn't take that long. Yeah, five minutes. I'm, I'm fine with that drop down. Okay. Now the last thing we're going to do is by far the prettiest, the parallel finishing. And we're going to switch to a ball mill. Ball, 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 ball. We have no coolant. Geometry, by now it should. Mm. So I wanted to cut that piece. Now do I want the tool inside the boundary? I want the tool to be able to go to the outside of the boundary, get the entire thing cut. That's all good. Same thing as my other guys. Passes, and this one's interesting because there actually is a step over equation. So same thing with our drop down. You want to adjust how much for stepping over it cuts and the steps and cuts and steps which means it's um, the feed load how much wood is this thing being fed if you got a giant bit in low density you can do 100 percent step over 100 percent every single time but that's only if you're doing foam with a giant nasty bit mm -hmm. um 50 percent is okay 70 percent is pushing it in my opinion there's a lot of uh, pressure on the bit 50s good in this case you're finishing things up so I would say start off with 25% as a good idea. So it's stepping over a quarter every single time. Uh, the smaller it steps over, the better fidelity you get, but the longer it takes. We talked about it yesterday. 25% gets it done in 10 minutes, right? If you do seven, it takes three movements to do 25% roughly. So you went from, let's see, 10 minutes doing 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So it depends, like, can I sand it or do I need to have this complex... Um, surface done in the computer, done by the CNC. Yeah, I'm going to have to sand it by hand after, so I think the 25% is fine. Let's see, so we're in millimeters. I'm going to get, what's the full width? This is 0.25. I'm going to call it 7. I know I'm rounding up. It's because I'm greedy. So seven divided by 0.25, it doesn't work like that, does it? Times. All right, I call it two. Direction both ways. You can have it if you want a cleaner cut where it just cuts, moves over, cuts, moves over and cuts. Takes time, I don't mind both ways. It just means maybe a little more sanding later. not leaving any stock that could be important if you needed something um, a connection and good okay let's see what we got I bet I'm gonna have to rotate it 90 degrees yeah so yes this could work and it's probably gonna take less time to get this cut but you need the detail in my opinion you need the detail here and you could run a simulation and say ah uh, for me that's your detail so instead of going along it, I'm going to cut across the grain. Yeah, I agree. So pretty easy to change that. Let's go back and edit. Tool paths. Yeah, 
Here we go. That's it. We want to run 90 degrees to that. Recalculating. That's better. Mm, so that's now it steps over this direction, and you're getting, you're getting a higher fidelity. Take a look at it. Play button. And we're going to speed this one up. This is going to take a while. Put that stock back in here. So much more confident that's going to give you the fidelity that you want. Okay. Yeah, there's going to be sanding. There's always going to be sanding included unless you're doing like a nothing step over, then you're running machine all night. <laughs> so it's like pick your poison. So in my opinion, this is this is what you need to get one done. Right now we're sitting at that's going to take 11 minutes. Wow, that's a lot, that's not bad. So 11:15. The biggest thing is roughing the material out. It's going to take 40 minutes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, ideally you go to a bigger bit because you're just removing a ton of material. But you just can't start by running parallel finishing. You'd have so much load on mm -hmm. the, the bit. If you had foam, probably not a big deal. And I'd slow it down. Um, but you just got to get material moved. And because it's all removed, I'm not worried about the contour, and I'm definitely not worried about the parallel finishing. It means it's going to be nice and smooth, and not, you're not putting mm -hmm. strain on your machine. OK, so your first cut, your first path, is cutting the, pro, uh, the general shape. 3D shape. The second one is cutting your profile around it. Yeah, and you could remove. You can do these back and forth. Um, like if you wanted to do that, that could work just fine. The reason is, I know there's so much material below there; mm -hmm. it's not going anywhere. Yep. If you if it was it's pretty thin at the bottom, I would cut the inside first and then the outside. The reason why is, if you cut this big thing, remember it's going to put pressure on it left and right as it's cutting and removing material. If you didn't have that really thick base, it yeah. might dislodge. Okay. So that's the reason why. In certain situations, you want to worry about, but this one, it's not going to matter. It's literally, it's gone to. Yeah, there's like an extra inch of that. Yep. It'll cut your outside, and you'll know this is where things are going to be happening. At. <clears throat> Actually, let's run everybody at the same time. Everybody say yee. We'll put it on fast forward because it's going to take a while. All right, to the outside, remove an eighth of an inch at a time on its way down. The part that you're wasting a lot of time in is, is the step over, but I don't know how to adjust adaptive clearing. It's still kind of new to me. The last thing is going to be parallel finishing. Sweet. Um, this part, yeah, I want to. I want to see something. If you didn't want to change the bits, yes, you can. If you did it flat, what's this cat going to look like? Yeah, Ben Bush has got to start walking in just a second. I don't want to stimulate. I need to generate close, regenerate path, because I turn it to a flat mill instead of an end mill. This is not what you're quote unquote supposed to do, but it removes the possibility of messing up. Let's see. I want stock, and honestly, I'd like to. Wall paint, what are you talking about? That shows how it would look if you didn't swap bits. Yep. Okay. I mean, it's going to be rougher. Yeah. You're going to have more to sand, but. But it, it, it is perfect, or more perfect than it will be if you swap. Yeah, you got it. So, all this, these little grooves up in here, mm -hmm. you're going to sand them. But you'd have to sand anyways. You just have more to sand. Okay. I mean, honestly, that's fine with me. And once you do one, you can come back and adjust this guy. It's not that. It's not bad. I'm just playing towards you know playing it safe and getting it done instead of messing it up. Because yeah, you know, if we were experts at this, that'd be one thing. But we're not. It's still kind of the prototypical phase. So we're gonna take these guys and all three of them, right? So if I don't specify, I'm exporting all these three things. Um, it will send me one and be like, "What? You only told me to get. You only told me to do one thing." So, so that's why I've, I've kind of daisy chained these all guys together. Last thing, post process is we're going to change this into the G code. That's it. Carbide. That's the post processor you got to download. Gerbil, gerbil. 
We're in millimeters. We're not going to test. We're in millimeters. And I'll do OK. Now, I believe this guy's going to send it to Mr. Moustache, which is what the guy that, that's what mine's called. And so this is handle, and this is how I write mine. Um, this is your left handle, right? Correct. Yeah, handle left. It is 10.17 at 12.52. The reason why is I have any new versions, I know which ones are the new versions. Got you. Do you have the camera or the thing? For chats? The, yeah. Yep. Because ours starts at one and Chad's nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> right. I got you. Oh, you're awesome. Do you All know right. how to set up my laptop? Yeah, probably. If not, I'll just give you my computer. <laughs>